All right, guys. I better get I better get started. Um, uh, okay, there's, there's two things, two or three things I want to do today. First of all, is uh, sunlight analysis, a method, uh, and then illuminance analysis, which gives you, you know, lighting levels within within the, the building. And then I want to show you a, a quick and simple way to make uh, a sunshade element that you can just add to your um, your building. Um, now I'm recording this lesson, so I'm going to put it up on, on Frontier and that little website I've made. Um, so it'll be under the fourth semester uh, BIM class, so you can follow along if you want to figure out how to press all the little buttons again, um, because otherwise it's almost impossible to teach Revit, I reckon. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the uh, one of the sample projects in Revit because it's an office building and it's you know similar enough. So I'm going to go in open. Uh, a sample file in here, and I'm going to use this uh, advanced sample project as the basis for, for what I'm going to do here. You're welcome to follow along with me, uh, and you can use your own project if you want, or copy the file and save it over and make a new project and um, and try it out. Because I will, I'll talk for ten minutes, then I'll get you guys to do it, and then uh, then I'll go on to the next thing, and then we'll, we'll kind of run it like that. Okay, so I'm going to open this up first. Advanced sample project. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so this is kind of like a um, pretty basic uh, office building. Uh, just switch off those colors there. And the first thing I'm going to do is a, a shadow analysis of the interior of the of the building. And this is good for really uh, coming to any conclusions about how much glare or uh, you know too much light in, in, in a building, we can get it uh, fairly accurately. So if I go, for example, to the second floor in here, go to the second floor plan, <coughs> um, if I press the shadows on here, you can see it gives us this kind of nice graphical uh, shadow diagram. But the problem with this is, this is shadows without any roof. There's nothing on top of these rooms. Uh, it gives you a nice presentation uh, drawing for, for a client or whatever, but it's not a realistic view of the shadows that would be in the building. Um, the, uh, often people try and get this by using a, uh, a section box and taking a cut through a 3D view, but that doesn't work either because that also takes uh, the elements out for the purposes of road. So what you need to do is create a camera. Um, now, here I'm assuming that first of all that the locate. Well, let's just change the location of the building first. Let's just make. It, let's put it in. Uh, let's turn it on. Turn on the sun settings. S select still. And I'm going to go into the map here so we can locate the building in Copenhagen. So at the moment it's in uh, Manchester, somewhere in uh, uh, near Boston or something. So let's change it to Copenhagen. Copenhagen. There it is there. So I can just click on that. And then we get this little uh, house. You've probably all done this before, or at least most of you have. And we can move that around. So let's put it out here in Amar for some reason. Let's assume that the buildings be built out here and you know that nice land out there. And press OK. And if I apply that, you can see that the shadows have been calculated based on its position in the world, this time and so on. Also I can change this to uh, 2000, let's just change it to today, so it goes to 2014, and let's change it to um, the summer solstice. Because when you're doing shadow diagrams, it's always best to do it in the extremes. So 21st of June, 21st of December, and then the, the equinoxes as well. So you usually pr produce four uh, comparative panels at the four key times of the year. So let's just do it in the summer solstice. So I'm going to change that to the uh, 21st. And uh, we'll change it to 12 o'clock. So this is 12 o'clock on the 21st of June. The sun is at the highest point as it, as it ever is in the, in the, uh, in the year. So that's our first extreme point of view. So I say apply that, and uh, you can see that this building is orientated pretty much directly south. So it's uh, let's do something like that. So now we've got the sun set up, and the sun <coughs> is set up for this view. We'll probably have to set it up again for the next view. What we need to do now is set up a camera so that we can get a realistic uh, idea of what the shadows will be like in there. So I go up to this little tool at the top here, the 3D tool, and here we have this uh, camera option. And this is what you use to set up a perspective view, usually in, uh, in Revit. So if I press this on, we have the option to do a perspective view. But I'm going to switch that off, because I don't want to have 
uh, vanishing points in this view. I want to have it straight down. Um, so I'm going to make a view that's straight down. So switch that off. And I'm going to just click on a position in the plan here. So that's position where the camera is at the eye level. And now I, I click on a position for the target that I want to look at. And it's not that important because I'm going to change it afterwards. But I'm just going to click it over here. And then you get something like that. <coughs> because the target level and the eye level have been set at the same level, which means it's looking straight across uh, in a horizontal. So you get something like a kind of a cross section through it here. First thing I want to change is it's clipping out all the stuff in the background here because the far clip is active. So I'm going to switch that off so we can see everything in the view there. That's over here. I'm going to do this quickly and then I'm going to do it again with you. So if you, if you get lost, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to do it again. Uh, and then I'm going to go up to this 3D uh, element up here, this kind of uh, view cube. And I'm going to select it until we get to a completely top view. And we can then stretch the view out until it gets the right dimensions that we want so we can see the whole building in there. So let's just stretch that around like that. <coughs> so it's pretty much showing us a, a roof plan at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is first of all we need to figure out at the levels that we want to take the viewpoint from. So I'm going to go into a cross section if we have one here. <coughs> And let's just WT that so we can get everything on the screen at once. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. WT it so we get the two things together. So here we have some levels shown in here. So let's say I want to make a shadow study of uh, the second floor here. So <coughs> you can see the second floor is at uh, 3.8 meters. And we want to take a view like at a standard plan height above the floor level, which is 1,200 millimeters. So what I'm going to do over in the eye elevation for the camera here, I'm going to change the eye elevation, if that'll stop doing that, to 1,200 meters above 3.8. So I'm going to change that to 5,000. And we're going to change the target elevation to 3.8. And if you watch what happens in here, if I apply that, now we have a plan view, but it's a plan view that includes all the elements of the building rather than chopping out the, the elements above that plan view. Okay. So that means is that when I roll in here and switch the shadows on, the shadows are suddenly realistic because it's taking into account the slabs above your head as well. So these are as accurate as is possible and they've been tested and verified that these, these, these diagrams are accurate. Um, for uh, for sunset. When I started working as an architect first, one of my first projects uh, when I was working by myself was uh, the, it was a department building, and uh, the planners asked me to do a sunlight diagram. And that's time everybody works in AutoCAD in 2D. I have to calculate all these points by hand, and then draw the lines around them, and then shade it all in in AutoCAD in 2D. And that's that's not as much fun as it sounds. <laughs> but now we have a list, little button in uh, in Revit that does it for us. So so. It's such a relief. Uh, it's, it's such a powerful tool that uh, it seems like so simple because it's just a button. But that was probably two days' work for me to do that I had to charge and bill for. Okay, so let's just go in here and because we're in a new view, let's just double, double check that we've got the, uh, the sun settings correct. We have the position correct. It's in, uh, yeah, it's in Amar where we set it. That's fine. We can change this. This d it changes for every view you're in. So let's change this to what we want again. Let's change it to uh, today, and then we change it to the s June the 21st. And we change it to 12 o'clock in the day. If we apply that, this is how the shadows will act at the hottest part of the year with the highest level of sunshine. Okay? So you can see that actually the sun shades they're using here are quite successful for, for, uh, for summertime. Uh, because the shading is uh, <coughs> he's taking care of that. So let's just say OK for that. So now we've done one of these, we can duplicate it. So first of all, I'm going to rename it. Let's call it a uh, summer uh, shadow study. And now we've, we've got an, a summer one. Let's just duplicate the view. And 
we'll rename this one and we'll call this winter shadow study and now we just go in here <coughs> change the sun settings to uh, 21st of December at 12 o'clock apply that and you can see at winter time suddenly these offices are pretty much full of sunlight at 12 o'clock in the afternoon so that, that gives you an idea as to the difference between what happens in the summertime or what happens in the winter time when you're dealing with uh, uh, workspaces um, so these shadow studies they're not only good for figuring out shading within the building but they're also uh, primarily if you're going for planning application I'll say how far does the shadow extend into the neighbor's property you know, does, it, does it overshadow his entire garden and so on uh, if you do four of these summer solstice winter solstice spring equinox autumn equinox you've covered all the main points of the year so the planners can uh, <coughs> can look at it and see well they have to to a certain degree trust you though I've ha I have had planners come to me we don't trust your, your sunlight diagrams but anyway, that's, that's another issue. But, but if you can verify this and say, well, there is no shadows over here at this time of year, or you can redesign the building so that the shadows are reduced, or at least you have some kind of tool that gives you an evidence-based analysis that allows you to make design decisions that's not just, well, I kind of feel this, or this looks kind of cool, or whatever, which is just nonsense. You know, it's based on evidence. So this is the kind of thing you can use for that, okay? Does everybody want to give that a go? <coughs> and I'll, I'll pause the... Uh okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is illuminance. And that, that's, that's more to do with um, services point of view. What is the level of light within the, uh <coughs> within the building? And this is, this is actually something that seems to be pretty much um, uh, standardized. There have been studies of how Revit calculates the le uh, light levels within the building, and they've come back as being extremely accurate so it is something you can, you can trust if you play with it a little bit and get some um, a fin honors input into how you can um, maybe get it working correctly but what we're talking about here is um, in terms of Revit is uh, rendering uh, but rendering for illuminance and rendering to the cloud so if I go to a view tool here just to show you what I'm talking about and I go to rendering cloud you get this standard uh, setup press continue now this only works if you're signed in with your Autodesk uh, ID at the top here. Otherwise, you don't get access to all these cloud functions. Okay. So instead of just using a, a normal render, <coughs> uh, a still image, we have the option to do an illuminance render. And this is the light uh, light render. If you remember from the, the lecture I gave yesterday, where we had that video with the guy uh, from well, I think it was DTU to to talk about Ecotech. This is the same stuff except through, through Revit. So first of all, we need to change the legend because we don't want to do it in foot candles because we're not in the States. We want to change it to Lux, the European measurement or SI measurement. And we have various <coughs> options as to, uh, as to uh, how it calculates it. We have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 200. We can just play with this a little bit. I usually use this uh, Daylight Factor Sky. And then we can choose, uh, you know, date from the view or we can put in our own date here and again I usually do 12 o'clock just as a as a um, as a standard you can you can give it a, a high quality render you can see here these cloud credits that uh, that you have to pay for you guys get them for free I don't know why it suddenly started taking cloud credits off me because uh, I suppose we have the educational package as well but um, Every time I render something now, it's, this gets a little bit less. But you guys should have unlimited uh, credits up there. So you can do unlimited cloud renders. Um, so you can change the, the, the value of it. Like if you want to have a very high quality one, for example, you can see that it actually costs more money. And a, and a company would have to pay the credits to, in order to do these high quality renders. So that's how Autodesk makes their money from this stuff. But uh, we get it for free. At least we're supposed to get it for free because uh, we're educating. So email me when complete, and then you press start rendering. So it's uploading all this information to the, uh, to the, to the Autodesk cloud over in Los Angeles or wherever it is. And uh, 
it actually, if you don't have all the materials set up in your project like this, this project here, because it does calculate how the light bounces off the individual materials in your project. What is the reflectance? What is the refraction index? Uh, how everything actually reflects together and creates you know, the colors of the wall and so on. It does all those calculations. So it might, you might get a message like this unless you've got everything set up perfectly. Uh, it doesn't make that much difference whether you don't have the leather of your seat set correctly. It's not going to make that much difference to it. But, but uh, sometimes it, it might. So it's giving you a warning about that. So then it uh, uploads it. And uh, you can actually press continue in background. So you don't have to wait for it to render. You can just let it render. Uh, and you can continue to work on your project as it's rendering in the background. You can see it's spinning around up here. If you, if you run the cursor over it, you can select view rendering progress. I select that, it opens up your, uh, your website where all your renders are happening. And uh, you can see that this is, the, uh, this is it in practice here. So these are all my renders from the last year or so. This is the one I just did in the class next door. And this is the kind of thing that you, uh, that you get at the end. So it's giving us a percentage of illumination between 0 and 200 lux value within the... Uh, within the office building itself. And you can see that actually the office the workspace is fine. It's, uh, it's down here uh, at, at zero. And you're pretty much uh, sure that's going to cause too much glare. But there is an atrium area up here, which has got extreme levels of light in there. So you probably would have a, an idea that there's some kind of sun shading you would need to produce for that area uh, in order to, to keep the temperature at, uh, at a certain level. And also, obviously, you can use as a workspace. So if you do one of these for each of the four cardinal points of the year, solstices and equinoxes, then you have uh, a kind of a documentary evidence for your design process from that point forward. So then you can say, well, we're, we're going to do sun shading because we have to. So then your client can look at the document and say, oh, I can see that. It's obvious to me that I have to have sun shading in there according to the regulations. So it's like, it's a way of justifying your design decisions that aren't just, I'm an architect and I think it's cool, which is just stupid. <laughs> Uh, so, so it's like evidence-based design. Okay. Does everyone want to give that a go? I'll just pause this video so, again. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, <coughs> sunshades. I mean, if you're talking about a sunshade, like a, a standard sunshade that's maybe, you know, three or four fins and has some kind of supporting structure like that, um, which is the easiest way of doing it in Revit, then it's quite simple to make it. Because if you think about a railing, which is like this, it's got a profile that's extruded, which is the rails, and then it's got an element that deals with the structure. So it's actually the same. All you need to do is basically just go like that, and you've made a sunshade. So I use the railing tool to make sunshades because it allows you to draw the shape of the sunshade and because the railing tool is already set up to extrude these things it will it will uh, allow you to draw lots of complex shapes and will just follow uh, the sunshade okay so that's what that's what I do as a very simple uh, sunshade element so it, it only needs you only need to make two families you need to make a family for the strut that holds it up and you can make it as complex as, as you want or as simple as you want and then you just need to make a profile for the shape of the elements that are going to be running horizontally. So it's the same as a, as a as, you know, you can make a profile, any shape profile for a handrail that you want as well. So it's the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a family for this, uh, for this baluster strut here. So I'm just going to make, draw a handrail first of all. So I'm going to architecture and draw, sketch a path for a railing. And I'm just going to use just a basic railing and just draw it like, like that. <coughs> and that's actually, let's put a curve on the end just so we can see how it works with curves. <coughs> oh, maybe I should draw this in plan view, never mind. Something like that. So then if I just accept that, then we have uh, a railing that's something like this. And you can see what I mean with the, the curve. It automatically draws the curve for you. So all you need to do is make the actual shape of the profile that you want to be extruded along that shape. Okay. So if I go in to a railing and uh, I select this one and edit the type, I'm going to duplicate it. 
and I'm going to call it uh, sunshade. So then we have the two main elements of the uh, of the, the the railing tool. We have the rail structure, which is the one that runs along, and then we have the baluster placement, which is these uh, these vertical elements. So uh, let's just say okay. So we have that. So now let's call sunshade. So I actually have to go out and make two families outside the project, one for the profile and one for the baluster. Let me just check, am I recording or not? I am, okay. Okay, so I go into new family up here at the top. And I'm going to use the uh, family templates, the English ones. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a metric baluster post family which is this template here. Press open. <coughs> and so you get all these uh, standard reference planes for, uh, for a metric baluster. And we don't need to worry about this. I'm not going to get into complex parametrics or anything like this. I'm just going to draw the shape and then we, we take it further. So a standard baluster is going straight up like this. So the one we want is we want it to be able to draw it along here but then shoot it out to the side in that kind of shape. So I'm just going to draw it sideways. Okay, so that's really the logic of it. So I'm going to go into the front view here. And, uh, whoops, it's falling down. I'm going to make an extrusion, because this is the simplest possible model we can make. So I'm going to make an extrusion. Uh, I'm going to pick a plane. I'm going to use the front back reference plane. <coughs> and then I get a chance just to draw a shape. So I'm going to draw this going out by 1200 millimeters and let's just put it down by let's make it 120 and we can give it a sh just a kind of a slight angle on it like that and draw it in uh, this you can make it any shape you want I'm just drawing something that looks a little bit like some kind of a strut so that's kind of the shape I'm talking about for, for this thing here so then we just need to give it a thickness. So I'm going to start the extrusion because we're drawing it on a reference plane. I'm gonna, uh, we're drawing it directly on the reference plane. I want it to extrude exactly the same distance to the back as to the front. So it comes right in the middle of where we place the balusters in the, in the railing. So I'm going to extrude the start at minus 25 and then I'm going to extrude it up to plus 25. So it's a 50 millimeter extrusion. Apply. And then if I accept that, go into the 3D view, then we have something like that, which is, you know, my mouse will work, is a uh, standard extrusion. We can always change that by dragging these elements and so on, but, but that's fine for our, for our purposes here. So I'm just going to load that into the project. I mean, we could add brackets and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff into this, but let's just leave, leave it basic uh, concept for the moment and just take the shape of it. So load into the project. And now if I select this railing that we've set up, I can go and edit it and go into the baluster placement. I can change the baluster family to the one we just made, which is family five. Actually, no, it would make more sense. Just cancel that for a second. If I go and give it a name, first of all. So let's just go back into family five. <coughs> I'm going to save it on the desktop so we can use it later. So save as family, put it on the desktop. I'm going to call it strut. And then load that into the project. So now we can go and modify the railing again, edit the type, edit the baluster, change the family to strut. And if I just apply that, you get all these struts going around following the line of wherever we drew the railing, okay? So that's the basic thing. So that, that allows us to have the, uh, <coughs> allows us to have the, the basic uh, situation there. You can see that the end pieces I haven't changed. So this, is, this has been left the same. So we can go back in and modify the railing, modify the baluster placement, and now we can change these ones as well because it allows you to make a different family for the overall baluster, but also often when you're dealing with a handrail, you want to have a different corner piece or a different uh, piece in the middle. So you have you have star pieces, middle pieces, and end pieces as well. So I can change all those to the same one. Just going to change that to strut. 
and let's just change the distance between them to let's say 1800 millimeters and I'm going to give it an offset of 150 below and I'll do the same just copy all these <coughs> in here change this offset to zero so that everything is in the same position if I apply that now you can see that that vertical element has disappeared and it's just been replaced with uh, the overall strut element okay so that's the first part so now we've now we've dealt with this part of the of the uh, of the sunshade so what we need is a, a profile that will give us a rail that we can move around the uh, on top of the um, of the strut itself so one more family I go into new family and this time <coughs> the template I want is a metric profile template so metric profile and this if you've never used metric profiles before this is the key to a lot of stuff with Revit it allows you to, to anything that runs along like a, a skirting board or like a gutter or anything on a roof or any kind of molding you can make a metric profile and you can insert it into your object and it will be extruded along the line that you want it to be. So this is the basis for a lot of stuff. So I'm going to use this metric profile. I'm going to open it. And I'm just going to draw a shape for a uh, just going to draw a shape for a sunshade. So I'm going to draw this at 45 degrees just to start off with. Let's make it uh, 150 millimeters long. Oops, what did I do there? That was 150. Yeah, okay. So let's just give it a little bit of a curve. Gonna put a curve on this side. Ah, let's do that again. Create line curve. Just give it a little bit of a blade. Then we just use the mirror tool. Mirror it across and delete the center. So that's the shape of the sun shape. So that's the shape for, for these lines along here. And you don't need to do any more than that. You just need to make the shape of it and close it and make sure it's closed on each end. So I'm going to save that as well. And the reason I'm saving it is you can always come back and modify them afterwards and reload them back into the project and we'll modify the whole uh, railing for you, the entire sun shape for you. So just by changing these two small families, this profile and the strut elements, you can con continually modify it as you design your building. So let's just call this uh, shade, I'll call it shade uh, three. <coughs> and then load it into the project. <coughs> so now we can go back into the railing tool, edit the type, and edit the rail structure. So here's all the circular handrails we can see existing here. So I can just go through them and uh, delete them like that until we're left with number one. I'm <coughs> going to change this one to sun shade. I'm going to change the height to zero. Uh, let's just change the offset to zero for the moment until we see what it looks like. And now we can change the profile to shade three, which is what we just loaded in. And we can also change the material to whatever we want as well. So if I just apply that, you can see that the shade has been put in place here. So the very first one has been put in place. So let's see if we offset it minus 50. It's either plus 50 or minus 50. You never know until you try it. If it goes, yeah, it goes in. So it's minus. So we've offset it minus 50, which means that it's offset my, uh, 50 millimeters from the line of where we drew the sketch of the way. Everybody understand? Okay. So all we need to do now is duplicate it. I mean, I, I would suggest you give it a material first. So let's just give it a material. Let's just make it some kind of, uh, mm, let's make it chrome. What the hell? Okay, so we've got some chrome sunshades. So then all you need to do is duplicate them. So let's put in a few of them, see how many we can get in there. And we just give them a different offset. So let's put, offset them so they're 150 millimeters apart. So I'm going to make this one 200. I'm going to make this one <coughs> 350. Make this one 500. Make this one 650. And what are we up to? 800. 
and we'll make this one 950. And if I apply that, it just goes across. I think we need one more. So let's just duplicate the last one. And we'll make this one 1100. <coughs> so then you have a sunshade, effectively. Uh, if I switch the shadows on, you know, you can see it actually does do some shading. Uh, but what we can do then is because it's just a railing tool, if I go into a plan, if I go into the second floor plan here, and let's say I want to put a sunshade along this facade here, all I need to do is go into architecture, railing, and sketch a path, make sure I select the correct sunshade railing, and then I can just effectively draw from here to here and I can give it an offset from the floor so we can decide what height we wanted above ground level so let's say we wanted at three meters above the floor level apply accept it now if I go back into the 3d view we should have if I can get this to rotate we can should have a sunshade at that point there so it's really it's kind it's kind of a simple uh, a simple uh, process, and then we can very quickly change <coughs> change the base offset to whatever we want, uh, so we can place it within the the uh, the levels, or we can use the copy monitor, copy tool here to copy it to uh, let's say two levels like that, so we can have it across the entire building. Okay, so we want to give that a go. Huh. We've loads of time, so if you want to give it a go, I'll give you a hand with it. Uh, I'm just going to pause the uh, the video here.